Earlier this year, U.S. and Qatari officials met in Doha to simulate a hostage situation. The exercise was fast-moving and hazardous. Islamic State militants in Somalia had seized four aid workers, two Americans and two Qataris. One of the Americans was gravely injured, and the group had to decide whether to attempt a rescue. No one in the room knew that within months, they would be grappling with a far larger crisis in real life. The simulation was part of a push to deepen partnerships ahead of a worst-case scenario, said Christopher O'Leary, the former director of the U.S. Task Force on Hostage Recovery. But nobody envisioned it could be this bad. The current hostage crisis in Gaza is unlike any other, experts say. While there have been previous situations involving large numbers of hostages, and even hostages from numerous countries, there has been nothing quite like this. A mass kidnapping of hundreds of people of more than two dozen nationalities, including children and the elderly, all now hidden in a war zone underlaid with tunnels. There are about 240 hostages being held in Gaza, according to Israeli officials. At least nine Americans and one legal permanent resident are believed to be among them. One is a three-year-old child whose parents were killed in the October 7 attack by Hamas on Israel, which left about 1,200 people dead. Two American women were previously released by Hamas on October 20. The crisis represents a major test for the Biden administration and for U.S. hostage policy. In recent years, much of the government's efforts have focused on Americans detained by states such as Russia, Iran, Venezuela and China on unfounded charges, leading to deals that brought home basketball player Brittany Griner and, more recently, five Americans held by Iran. Before last month, terrorist groups had not taken any Americans hostage this year, according to a recent report by the James W. Foley Legacy Foundation, an advocacy group that works for the release of U.S. citizens held abroad. In a policy that dates back to the 1970s, the United States has long stated that it will offer, no concessions, to hostage takers. But the reality is more complex. In practice, the U.S. government deploys a range of tools to bring home hostages and detainees, experts say, including negotiating prisoner swaps, policy changes and access to funds via third parties. The one exception, it does not pay ransoms to groups it has designated as terrorist organizations, such as Hamas. The United States has also worked to mount rescue operations, although such missions are invariably risky. These efforts are sometimes led by foreign partners. About half of the publicly reported missions to recover American hostages over the past two decades were conducted by the military forces of other countries. According to research by Danielle Gilbert, a political scientist at Northwestern University, U.S.